Good morning, Calvary. It's Pastor Chad with your word for the day. And today uh, we're looking at a psalm that some of you may find uh, strange to believe. It's one of my favorites. It's Psalm 22. And it's, it's kind of long. I'm not going to read the whole psalm to you. Uh, but I love this psalm because I believe Jesus was quoting it when he was on the cross. Uh, you may be familiar with the sayings of Jesus on the cross. One of them that used to disturb me to no end was, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And, and a lot of uh, times I thought, why would God forsake Jesus? Why would he do that? Why? why? And, and we knew he, Jesus was being our sacrifice for sin. We knew that Jesus had to pay the penalty for us so that we could be saved. But that cry was just heartbreaking. And, and yet, as I began to read scripture for myself, I discovered that Psalm 22 begins with, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? And as you read through Psalm 22, you begin to see a clear picture of the crucifixion happening. You begin to see a clear picture of what was recorded that happened to Jesus during the crucifixion. And, and you begin to realize that Jesus is referencing to a psalm that is a prophetic psalm about him. And, and listen to some of Psalm 22. In verse 6 he says, But I am a worm and not a man. Scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They make mouths at me. They wag their heads. Oh, he trusts in the Lord. Let the Lord deliver him. Let God rescue him for he delights in God. That's what the Pharisees and the priests said to Jesus when he was on the cross. If you really are the Messiah, come down from there and we'll believe in you. If, God, if you're a, the son of God, then let God rescue you and we'll believe. But it goes on in, in verse uh, 14. The psalmist says, I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs encompass me. A, a company of evildoers encircles me. Listen, they have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Amazing picture of the crucifixion of Jesus. And, and so now when I hear, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I think of the psalm and the picture of the crucifixion, but I also think of the psalm and the way that it ends. Because it starts out in agony and questioning where God is, but this is where the psalm ends up being. And this is where I think Jesus was pointing people to the hope that he had in God, not the reality that he felt forsaken by God. Later in the psalm it says, I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. For he has not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, and he has not hidden his face from him but has heard when he cried to him. He goes on to say, For from you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will perform before those who fear him. The afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek God shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. You see, even in the midst of Jesus' greatest pain, greatest sorrow, even as he cries out in anguish, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He is pointing to victory. He is pointing to the hope we have because he knew the resurrection was coming. And if you're in a place right now where you're feeling broken, if you're feeling forsaken, if you are crying out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I understand. It's perfectly legitimate. The situations in life may look like they're all against you. But can I remind you that God redeems? Hold on to that hope. Hold on to the reality that God has not forsaken you. He has not turned his face from you. And commit yourself to praising God in the assembly, praising God in the midst of the congregation, praising God in the midst of the people who are around you so that they can see your faith and they can be drawn to Jesus because you refuse to give up on the hope we have in Jesus Christ. The hope of the resurrection, the hope of redemption, the promise of heaven that will see us through the worst of times. It makes me think of what the Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 8. I do not consider the present sufferings of this world worth comparing 
to the glory that will be revealed in us in Christ Jesus. Look, the best is yet to come. No matter how bad it is today, we have hope for tomorrow. And I pray that you, like me, are committed to praising God with every breath that he gives us, even to the last one, because he is faithful, even when it doesn't feel like it. God bless. I hope you have a blessed day.